everybody. Welcome. I'm Abaya, and we are broadcasting from Konalani on the big island of Hawaii. Um, we've got a really fun sequence for you, something that's you know available to all levels if you're really willing to honor your body and not try to push higher into things than your body wants, but really listening and um, enjoying all the movements. We will spend a little extra time with some fun um, shoulder work that will help us prepare for our peak pose of Parvrita Bhikasana, um, revolved crow pose. Before we begin, I want to just take a moment to introduce you um, to the yoga deck. I know many of you have been here and love it here, but if you're new to um, Konalani and our practice, our number one priority in the Shambhavananda yoga and meditation tradition is connecting inside, connecting to the heart, opening up internally, and using our yoga practice to prepare for meditation and prepare for skillful navigation throughout our day where we can just be happier and more functional. Um, today we are joined by White Tara. This is a beautiful, original, handmade print by uh, Faith Stone, one of the ashram's founders. And I'll talk a little bit more about White Tara at the end of our time together today. Um, but she's the goddess of compassion. She is like a loving, perfect mother, nourishing us and supporting us and, and guiding us um, to be happy and feel safe and enjoy our lives. So I urge you, as you practice today, to open to that energy of finding inner support, enjoying your practice, not worrying about getting a workout, not worrying about pushing into a really intense pose, but rather feeling love and compassion for yourself, just as White Tara feels for each of us. So with that, um, we will begin. If you'd like to practice with music today, I'll recommend music by the artist Marconi Union. The song Weightless is awesome for the first half. That's what I was listening to. And then for the second half of the class, same artist, new track Ginza District just takes it up a little bit. A nice energizing track to help you move through our second vinyasa. I'm going to turn to the side so it's a little bit easier to see me, but you might want to have the short edge of your mat um, facing the video screen so you can follow along. And from the back, just extend the legs, draw the shoulder blades down the back, and just take a moment to let everything settle. Your body is completely supported here, so you can let go of any muscular engagement. Let the earth take hold of your body. And bring all the focus to your breath flow. Just notice the gentle rise and fall of the breath. Notice how the breath impacts the body. You inhale the body the lungs, the navel, stretches three-dimensionally in every direction, like filling up a balloon. Making a little more space for oxygen, prana, the energy of your practice to be invited in. Allow 
allow the exhale to guide you into softness and release. Letting go of any tension physically, also any tension in the mind. Each time you exhale, feel your yoga mat rising up to meet you, to cradle you. And we'll just take a few breaths like this. Maintaining this link of inner focus, slowly start to reverse snow angel, the arms up and overhead and feel the journey. Notice the musculature in the shoulders gently working to lift the arms and when the arms arrive overhead, point the toes, stretch the fingers, lengthen and take a couple of breaths in this stretched out position. And then interlace the hands, bend the elbows and flip the palms. Gently start to press the palms away, point the toes, breathe into the shoulders. Flip the palms once again. This position usually feels a little more natural than the previous position. Glide the heels in and gently start to reach the knuckles towards side of the leg. Don't think of this as a crunch, rather just feel the musculature lifting and supporting you. Now we go to the left side. Enjoy the journey, right? We're not focusing on a six pack ab workout here. We're trying to build sensation in the body. One more time each side. Feel what's guiding you upward. We'll be coming back to this over and over so you don't have to go as high as possible just off the bat. Pause on your back once again and then float the feet. Knees are bent, flip the palms again, elbows are bent and then we extend and bend. This is a really nice therapeutic mini sequence right here. And just waking up the connections in the low back, the shoulders. Feel the limbs connecting back towards the core. Just like the spokes of a wheel connecting back to the hub. Pause. Just kick out the legs and then reach the arms out. Shake out the arms. Pause. Let everything settle. Take a breath. And then begin to stretch the right leg forward and both arms overhead. The leg might not go as far as mine and that's totally fine. You wanna focus on stability. Pause and switch. So maybe your leg pauses here but your hips feel really supported. That's number one. One more time each side. And the next time the left leg lifts, grab behind the knees and maybe with one rock, you come all the way to seated or take a couple, build some momentum, that's fine. I'm gonna turn so that you can see me, but you'll stay pointed in the same direction. Bend the knees generously and let them slowly start to fall out to the sides. Kick into the heels, lengthening the legs forward and then bend the knees. So we're just drawing nice circles with the knees, not worried about a deep forward fold here. We're just warming up. As you get used to this motion, you might notice how the torso starts to respond, right? So first is the legs, but then the spine starts to wave naturally as you kick into the legs. If that's too much to think about, just focus on those circles with the legs and the spine will come later. That's totally fine. Take a couple more on your own. And then our first fun transition of class, 
cross the right ankle over the left, left hand behind you. Keep your hips low so there's no strain in the shoulders. Slowly start to pivot to the left. Plant your right palm down. Drop the knees and let's wake up our shoulders a little bit more here. So without moving the hands, pull the hands down and wide. So just isometric contraction here and peek the heart forward. And then push the hands forward and up, again without moving them, and round the other way. Take a couple on your own and try to move as minimally as possible so that you can really wake up the small deep muscles and the shoulders. So don't think of this as like a intense musculature action. Just rather saying hello. All right, and come to neutral. Walk the hands forward, one handprint. Tuck toes, hover knees, slowly start to press into the hands, lifting the hips high. Keep the knees bent at first and just wag your tail from side to side. Bend the elbows a little and make sure there's no tension in the neck. You can even shake out the head. Take a breath. And then walk the feet together like a tripod of the two hands and the feet. Slowly lift the right foot and shift the right knee all the way across the body towards the left elbow. If that's too much, you can always lower the back knee and take this from table instead. And then extend up. And now bring the knee forward like pigeon, except this is gonna be a more linear pigeon where the calf is gonna stay right underneath the thigh. Wag your tail from side to side. and then bring the right hip down, the left hip down, and open off to the side. Let the right foot open so you've got more space. Plant the left hand behind you and slowly lift the hips. It might just be a little bit or maybe a little bit more. Just make sure there's no tension in that left side of the neck, right? We want a lot of freedom here. Set the hips down and let's roll back to where we started, that linear pigeon Shake the hips from side to side, bend the elbows. Um, there's a little weight in the hands, but no strain in the wrists. And then let's roll open again. Lift as high as is comfortable on that right shoulder. Last one. Continue to breathe and reach for sensation in the body. Feel the massage through the outside of that right hip and then the left hip and then lift. This time, place the hips down, keep the right knee pointed and upward, and then slowly start to twist to the right, gaze over the right shoulder. And then look at your left foot, plant your left hand behind you, power into the right foot and hop over the left leg. I'm gonna demo that one more time because if you've never done it before, it can be tricky. Left leg stays extended, power into the right foot, and you're in a lunge. Set that back knee down and start to hula hoop through the pelvis, just releasing any tension in the hips. Don't worry about a stretch here. Rather, um, feel the support of the feet beneath you. Maybe that front foot would be more supportive if it walked in. And then pause at center, let the pelvis settle. Bring your awareness to the right foot. Power down into the right foot. Gaze up. Come to standing. That first round might have been tricky, so we'll repeat it a couple of times. Hover the left foot. Step back to a short lunge. And let's repeat those hula hoops. Notice the sensation of the pelvis drawing a nice big circle, changing where you might feel sensation or stretch in that left hip flexor, and then pause, press into the right foot, gaze up, come to standing. Pause. We'll do that one more time. So extend the left leg back, back knee down, couple of hula hoops, not so many this time, and then pause, power into the right foot, come to standing, and now let's enjoy the standing moment. Feel free to walk the feet a little bit wider for support underneath the pelvis. Bend the knees a little. Take a couple of breaths through the right side of the body. We've already done 
some interesting work on that right side. So you might notice energy flowing or muscles starting to talk to you. Okay, so now we'll reverse back down to that lunge that we did before. Shift the weight into the front foot and slowly start to lift the hips, slowly start to lift the left leg. Bend both knees deeply, cross the legs like you really have to go to the bathroom. Set the back toes down, set the left hip down, and then bring the hips square to the top of your mat and just wave from side to side, massaging through the hips. Uncross the legs and um, bring the hands to the right side, squeeze the elbows in. Here's our um, side crow prep and then go the other side. Squeeze everything together one more time each side. And then soles of feet together, let the knees come out wide. Just bounce the knees a couple of times. And we'll do that same sequence on the second side. So extend the legs, slowly recline onto the back. We're back at the beginning. And we'll go through that therapeutic back sequence. So first, stretch the arms overhead, lengthen through the whole body. Interlace the hands, flip the palms, and again, stretch. Walk the heels in, flip the palms again, and roll up to the right, roll up to the left. One more time each side, and just notice as we're repeating these same movements again, if you naturally want to come a little higher. If not, then don't. <laughs> Bring the arms down, float the legs, keep a nice bend in the knees, flip the palms again, extend arms and legs, feel the limbs wiring into your core. That'll really help us when we get to our arm balance later, some of our standing poses later on. And then give the legs a shake, give the arms a shake, Extend right leg and arm. Stability is key here. Don't worry about getting the leg all the way down. One more time each side. And then grab behind the knees. Now push both legs forward. Let that bring you up to center. So just like we did before, bend the knees, let the knees fall out to the side, and then kick into the legs so they extend can focus just on the legs or notice how I'm adding my spine into it. You can even add the arms in as that feels natural. One step at a time. Don't overcomplicate your life. That's a good lesson off of the yoga mat too. Okay, bend knees. This time left ankle crosses in front, right hand behind you. Slowly start to lift the hips and bring the left hand down. Wag your tail from side to side, knees down, shoulders under or over your wrists, and then pull the hands towards you and wide, let the heart peek forward. Push them out away, squeeze the hands together, engaging the pecs, round up towards the sky. Couple more on your own. Remember, we're seeking sensation, so don't worry about maximum output. Instead, notice the sensation in the armpits. Notice the sensation in the chest, in the shoulder blades, even up towards the neck. And then walk the hands forward, bend the elbows a little, cover the knees, send the hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Walk the feet together. This time the left foot lifts, press into the hands, reach up through the heel. And then slowly bring left knee across the body towards the right elbow, twisted crow prep, lift the leg back up. And then set the knee between the hands, linear pigeon, wag the tail from side to side. And then left hip down, right hip down, right hand behind you. It's okay to let this foot come open if that feels like a more comfortable tripod as you lift the hips a little or a lot and then hips come down and roll back to linear pigeon. Wag your tail from side to side and then roll open. Support yourself, lift up. 
Check in with that right shoulder, the right side of the neck whenever you lift. Last one. This time, set the hips down and slowly start to twist to the left. Lengthen the spine. Don't crank into it, but let the muscles around the spine start to warm. You can bring the neck into it if that feels good. And then we'll pivot over the right leg for our lunge. So right hand behind, push into the left foot and hop over the right leg. Back knee comes down, start to circle the hips. And then take a little bit shorter of a stance. It'll make standing up easier. Ungrip the toes, feel the triangle of your foot root down. Look up, power into the left foot, come to standing and then reverse that. Release any tension. Power into the foot, come to standing. Last one. And just pause. Plant that right foot down, let everything settle. Feel maybe a, a balance in the body. Now we're balanced on right and left sides, almost. And then send that right foot back, press down into the hands, bend into the front knee and slowly start to lift the leg and then cross it behind the left leg, squeezing everything down, place the right hand back on the mat and then bring the right hip to the mat, slowly rolling open square to the front of your mat and just take a little figure four massage here. And then uncross the legs, another side crow prep. This time, squeeze everything together and hover the feet. Just notice how the core naturally engages. You don't have to overdo it. One more time each side. And then soles of feet down, knees float open. I'm gonna go to the next track. <laughs> pick up the pace a little bit. We'll pick up the pace and we'll add on um, that standing sequence that was at the end. Slide the hips back, slowly come to recline. Stretch the arms overhead. Flip the palms, take another stretch. Bring the heels in. Roll up to the right, maybe a little higher. Roll up to the left. One more time each side. This time, roll up to the right, hover the legs, and squeeze everything together. And same thing on the other side. And then release everything down. Interlace the hands, flip the palms, hover the legs. Extend knees and elbows. Couple of these on your own, just releasing through the low back. And then shake the legs, shake the arms, and then Virabhadrasana three prep. So imagine that left foot is on the earth, you'd be in Vira three. This will help us in our standing sequence. One more time, each side. And then legs pull you up. We go right into our modified forward fold, rolling through all the attachments of the hamstrings. Instead of just stretching one same rut all the time, um, this is a little more full of an experience. And we're on our first side, so cross right ankle over left, left hand behind you, turn. We're going to skip our tabletop and go right into downward facing dog. Walk the feet together, right foot reaches high, cross the body, bend the elbows a little bit, make sure there's no tension in the neck, reach the leg up, and then linear pigeon, sway the hips from side to side, option to drop the back knee, lift the back foot for a quad stretch, you can even grab hold of it for a moment, but that's not the goal. Right? We're being compassionate, we're enjoying the ride, and we're not pushing into poses that the body doesn't want. Release and roll, right hip down, left hip down, lift to wild thing, 
We've done this before, right? So maybe you wanna lift a little higher this time or maybe that's too much in the shoulder. Honor your body and then let's try it again. Last one. You can even draw a nice big circle on that last one. That can feel really satisfying. And then set the hips down and take a nice twist. Gaze over the right shoulder. Take a moment to lengthen through the spine. And then twist gently one vertebra at a time. Not maxing out your back, but just exploring. And then open up towards the left leg. Left hand plants to the side. Power into the right foot. Whoop. Take your pivot, drop the back knee. Take one moment here. We're not gonna repeat this three times like before. We'll just power into that right foot, come to standing, and just pause. Let all that information settle, and we'll play with some standing poses now. So shift the weight into the right foot, cross the left ankle over the left thigh, left ankle over the right thigh, you can stay upright here, or you can start to bend the knee, testing your balance, stretching that left hip a little bit. Arms to an active V can help with balance. And then hover the knee, start to reach the hands forward and the foot out, just like we've practiced on our back a few times, Virabhadrasana three. Set the back toes down, bend both knees, let the pelvis settle. Big circle with the arms, lift the chest, maybe even smile, enjoy the ride, right? Step into the right foot, left leg down, give that right hip a rest. You did a lot of good work. Breathe to the heart. We're gonna repeat that same sequence two more times. So shift the weight, hover left leg, standing figure four, stay upright or bend the right knee. Hover the knee, slowly reach hands forward, foot back as you tip. Virabhadrasana three, nice and supported. Set the toes down, bend both knees, lift the chest, big circle. And then step forward, let that all settle. And for this last round, if there is a pose, um, in that sequence that you want to stay in a little longer and explore, please just ignore me and enjoy the warmth, enjoy the work you've done in your body to prepare you um, to enjoy these poses um, in your own way. So shift the weight, figure four. Whenever you're ready, unfold, Vira three. Set the toes down, nice, big circle. And then release the hands down, lift the leg up, and we'll have that transition to seated figure four. So squeeze the left knee and bend both knees. Bring the left hand behind you for a little support, and then left hip down, right hip down, and give yourself a little massage. Okay, so we've got some options here. Uncross the legs. Option one is to keep playing with um, our twist and our core strengthener with the feet down and the bum down. If your shoulders feel really warm and you wanna try um, twisted crow, you can come onto your toes, bring your hands to one side, and instead of holding it and building a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders, imagine your body like a pendulum. We'll lift and we'll let our body start to swing to one side and then swing to the other side. And maybe there's a little bit of hang time, but you let yourself just be nice and loose here, not forcing any rigidity, and then play with the other side. And if that builds a bunch of tension in your neck and shoulders, don't do it, right? Our practice is to help us feel good, help us rewire bad habits, so let's not form new ones. Um, Just play with shifting the weight. 
not trying to become rigid. And then back to center, set your hips down, soles of feet together, knees open, give them a bounce. And if you want, you are welcome to wave the spine forward, or maybe you just want to stay tall and relax the hips. It's up to you. When you're ready, extend the legs and slowly recline onto the back. And we'll just be repeating that exact same sequence on the second side. So take a moment to just let it all settle. And we begin with our stretch. Take a breath, flip the palms and stretch again. Walk the heels in, roll up to one side, roll up to the other. Instead of repeating that, let's just go right into the backward side crow. And then flip the palms, hover the legs, extend knees and elbows. And instead of reaching for a stretch here, just imagine you're nourishing all your joints. This is like a massage. This is therapy. You're oiling your joints. And then shake the legs. And then shake the arms. Vera 3 prep. Stretch it out. Imagine yourself doing this so fluidly, balancing on one foot. I know you can do it. You're about to. The next time the leg floats up, grab behind the knees and slowly come all the way up. Modified forward fold. Make this your own, right? So it can be just about the legs or you can allow the body to get into it as well. And then the arms. Back up to seated. Now left leg crosses, right hand behind you, unfold. To down dog, step the hands forward, lengthen the hips up, keep a little bend in the knees, and then start to extend. Walk the feet together, left leg up, left leg across the body, squeeze, left leg up, linear pigeon, wag your tail, and then set the knee down, option to take the twist. Left hip down, right hip down, open off to the side, plant the right hand, press into the feet to lift, and then set everything back down, and then flow between those two shapes on your own. Again, you always have the option for the quad stretch. It's not for everyone, so don't force into it. Just enjoy the fluidity in your body. Keep breathing. Last one. Set the hips down, take a nice twist, take a couple of breaths here, make sure the shoulders are relaxed. You can even circle them out, gaze to the left. And then right hand to the right side, pivot over the left leg. Couple of hula hoops, set the knee down, shorten your stance if you need to, and then gaze up, stand up. I get to look at Tara. Let that be a reminder to take a breath to the heart. Find a little more joy in your movement. Shift the weight into the left leg. Figure four. Breathe. And then hover the knee, tip forward, reach the arms forward, extend the leg, Virabhadrasana three. Should feel easier than usual because all that great prep work you did. Set the toes down, lift the chest, big circle. And then come to standing, release the arms. Pause, we repeat that two more times. Figure four. Unfold. Let's call this effortless Virabhadrasana three. Toes down. You can be the judge of that, though. Nice big circle. And then step forward. Remember, for this last round, hold any of those poses if it feels more interesting to you. Fear of three, high lunge, Anjaneyasana, nice big circle. And then 
set the hands down, shift the weight into the front foot, lift the back foot, and then squeeze the legs together, bring the back toes down, bring the right hand to the mat, right hip down, and we're back on our bottoms. Little massage through the hips, uncross the legs, maybe one round of side crow was enough for you. In which case, stay here, twist, core strengthener, awesome. Otherwise, give it a second round with that pendulum swing from side to side. Now that you've got the hang of it, you can even switch or not, but it's a fun option if you feel ready for it. And then back at center, hips down, soles of feet together, bounce the knees. Option to wave forward. And because that was actually our last round and we're just headed to our back, let's add that nice forward fold that we've been coming back to again and again and explore it a little more deeply. So it starts with the knee bending, opening, and then extend the legs. And now, if the hamstrings, if the spine want to pause at any moment, that's fine. Or keep moving. It depends on your constitution. It depends on your makeup, what's going to be needed. So you have to really listen and not just assume what I'm doing is the right way. And then recline onto the back. Take your big stretch. Flip the palms, stretch again. Walk the legs and no need for our core exercise here. So we're gonna skip it and just lift the legs, bend and extend a couple of times. That nice therapeutic movement we've been repeating. And then shake out the legs, shake out the arms and stretch everything out. You can snow angel the arms back down to the side. Turn off your music and just let the body rest. You're welcome to stay here as long as you wish. I'm going to come up to seated because it's very important for the teacher not to fall asleep. And take a moment to just scan the body. Notice any new life you've breathed into your body through our fluid motions and you actually paying attention to your knees. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana and pause me. Ten minutes is the recommendation. I'm going to play just a couple minutes of Tara Mantra, our light Tara, again, that's been with us through our class today. And so you can enjoy it from Shavasana. You can come up to seated and actually try chanting with me.
to take just a couple of deep breaths, absorbing the nectar of the mantra, absorbing that healing, nourishing, supportive Tara energy. And thank you so much for sharing in this practice today. Namaste.